American car culture has found its way all around the world. It's a national treasure that has gone global and soaked deep into just about every aspect of modern life. And most people don't even know it. I'm Dan Stoner, and I've spent my life searching for the legends of underground car culture hidden in plain sight and telling their stories that nobody else can. Some you might be familiar with, some you might not. These are the stories you've heard of, but have never actually heard. This is the Motor Underground. The great poet Ferris Bueller once said, life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Well, life moved pretty fast for the shifters too, but then everything seemed to come to a screeching halt. Could the club survive such a heavy loss? Had the world moved on? Did the hot rod revolution forget where it came from? I got in a divorce. Anthony got in a divorce. Sinus got in a divorce. And then Anthony was killed in an accident. And this happened all within a year's time. And that's a significant, you know, uh, hit below the belt. And um, I think it's safe to say that we didn't know what direction to, to go with uh, after that for the longest time. You know, it took him 10 years to get back in the club. And I wish it would have been sooner because he's a good guy and he's a brother and he's one of my best friends. So it gave us a chance to, for everybody to kind of reset and think about what we were doing and, and think about what was important. And that show was not important really in the end. It was just making some other guy a bunch of money and we weren't getting shit out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Yeah, we kind of faded, but and also people are living in different cities, so. But we still love each other. Well, it, it did. It started with Axel, and then the Anthony thing, and then it was like, ah, oh, fuck. All right, maybe we'll just retire. And I moved away, so that, that didn't help anything. But I just I needed to get out, you know. Southern California was just full of bad memories, and 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 Mike was one of very few that was there with and for me. Um, behind closed doors, there, not so much anymore, but for quite a few years, there were people, you know, they'd have a beer or two, or, or we'd be hanging out, and then the, 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 the subject matter, hey, where are you guys? What, what, what's going on? Um, and uh, we don't see you guys, we might see one or two here or there, and then they're just like a ghost rider. And they... Kevin was doing his thing, building his 40 Merc, you know, chop thing that he's doing now. And, you know, he was doing, back then he was probably doing retro 50s, like bars and stuff, I think he was doing. Marky's always been, you know, fabricating something. But, yeah, it, it, I mean, I was so far, I mean, we weren't going to clubs. There's no clubs to go, you know, that is that scene is gone and, you know, it's gone. So it's to see what it did to the scene, quote unquote, is not, uh, I don't really, you, you know, there's, there, the scene really wasn't, I mean, you could go and find it, but it wasn't there. It wasn't amongst us. Like we weren't meeting on a weekly basis or, or day, back in the day it was daily, but, or a weekend basis or even a monthly, you know, maybe a Viva Las Vegas bringing somebody, but I haven't gone to that in you know, a million years. It, I went the first three years and I saw it was turn in a direction I was not interested in, so. <laughs> My name is Luigi Babe, all right, and I'm from Brooklyn. You got a problem with that? They, everybody was still there in spirit, you know. It was a, it was a thing like, you know, we're gonna get past it, you know. And Kevin and I would, would talk all the time, you know, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Next year we're gonna do this, and in the spring we're gonna do this, and it's gonna be good. We'll, we're we're gonna get past this, you know, because they're it definitely uh, it definitely rocked the boat when Anthony passed and. And, and 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 now slowly we're we're getting back to it, you know. Keeping a group of guys together for thirty years is nearly impossible, but when you have really good friends and everybody understands each other and respects each other, then it's then it is possible, and that's what we had. We had everybody that loved each other and respected each other, and it went above cars, you know. Like we actually had real friendship. Cars were secondary. The friendship was first. And that's, that's true, you know? I mean, we all took care of each other. I think that's 
what it came down to is we were really best friends, like brothers. So, you know, the thing about the bubble top is it was already needing to be restored when Anthony was still alive. You know, he had kind of let it go and he got into motorcycles and it sort of been sitting there for a little bit. It still ran, but it. So, I suppose bringing it back was uh, important for us because number one, the car is really cool. You know, like he, he knocked it out of the park with that car. And for, for that car to be sitting is a shame. Kind of wanted to do it for his family, but also for us, you know, I'm not gonna lie. You know, everybody misses Anthony. And I think with restoring the car, it was almost bringing a little piece of him back. You know, we can never have our best friend back, but we can at least have his car all bitching and restored, you know, his art just back, you know, and so it's like bringing him back. I felt so bad. I was actually back uh, east and uh, sitting in my barn in my shop and I was uh, almost in tears. I said, like, like, I'm supposed to be there. I'm supposed to be there. I, I just couldn't do it. That was, you know, a big thing for me yesterday. I had to make the effort to come out here to uh, just go and help grab that car. I had no really I had no idea what I was going to see. I almost died in that car three times. Once on the way up, we almost flipped the car. And two times on the way back from uh, Vegas, we, uh, we were getting sprinkled on. And I'm looking up. And you got you to gotta understand that this car is super loud. I could talk out loud like I'm talking now, and he couldn't hear me. And I'm, I'm, I'm going, man, it's, is it raining? I said, it's bright sunshine. And I said, yeah. He's like, what? I said, is it raining? He goes, feels like it. And we both, we look up at the same time and there was this big tractor trailer with all these big pig butts and it. it was a freaking cattle trailer with pigs going to market. And we're like, ah! So he just grabs that. Well, it's kind of a steering wheel. And he just goes like this and Next thing I know, and I'm, I'm laying down in this car, right? I'm like four inches off the ground. He never slows down. I, God's honest truth. He never slows down. I got this tractor trailer wheel right there. And he somehow he got out of it. it and we were like, right, right between the cars. I was, I was like, <laughs> you know, I had to laugh. You know, I was like, I was almost killed. Just It's been, um, I think, about 11 years for me since I saw the car because it uh, Anthony took it off the road for a little while. He was, you know, driving around a pickup and stuff. He had a couple other cars. So that was a big moment. And I think it really is uh, essential for the aura of the club to have that back here in SoCal and have it um, being around it for everybody. It, it means a lot to everybody. And so that's going to help right there, you know, a few of the guys are going to work on it and try to get it back at least presentable to show fairly soon. And we hope to have it uh, in uh, Las Vegas in a couple months. They better be getting busy. But it's great. It's wonderful to have that car back, and, and we're going to try to get it back in its glory because we know that Anthony will be above watching that going, ah, oh, you missed a part right there, you fuckers. Shifters survived, you know, like a lot of these clubs – came and went throughout the 90s. Uh, I, I could name so many of them. Uh, but the shifters really kind of held in there and, and kept it together, and they're still around today. You know, so they were one of the first of the, what we call the vintage revival days uh, of the 90s, uh, and they're still, they're still around today because they're just who they're true to themselves. They, they are who they are. They grew up this way. They didn't try to be something else. And that's why they've continued on uh, well for all these years. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it hell, you know. I, I, I like this, uh, you know. I've been so entrenched in drag racing lately, and you know, good times and bad times, you know. I love my team, but uh, I definitely love my, you know, my buddies that we, we grew up. We had a lot of fun together, you know. I, I'm not saying we took it for granted, but I definitely miss just how easy it was, even though we thought it was hard, you know, we're struggling, you know, oh my gosh. And I look back now, we had a pretty, pretty damn amazing, man. I think, I think our, our era was even more bitching than the fifties were. I mean, we had to research. I mean, every, every song we listened to, every thing done on the car, that was through looking at a magazine or researching it. It didn't just come to you. So uh, 
it was it it is still my life, you know. Uh, would I love to get all the guys together and cruise down the street all day long, all day long? I miss it every day. If uh, it'd be awesome if this gets something going again, and uh, you know, it'll never be what it was, but we can definitely make it. You know, uh, let the world know how cool it is, and maybe maybe we'll inspire some people to. Uh, get another, you know, it went 20, 25 years, right, from the 60s, and then it came back in the 80s, so maybe, you know, we're 22 right now, so, you know, maybe by 2025, maybe it'll be the third generation of uh, the 50s or 60s style coming back again, so. Yep, keep going. Slow, 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 slow. So he shows me this model. He's like, hey, what do you think? I said, man, that's that's incredible. Are you going to do that to your car? He's all, yep, I think so. So anyway, um, everybody said, no, you got to find another body. You, know, you can't just chop up your Model A. It's already kind of legendary or whatever. And uh, he's, nah, no, I got to gotta do it with my car because it's got to be the evolution, you know, and uh, which was cool. You know, that was just Anthony's style. And uh, I think, you know, one of the things that is a cool thing about that is sometimes you got to destroy to create. You know, destroying one car but created another. Partially, you know, it's. Um, Kind of wanted to do it for his family, but also for us. You know, I'm not going to lie. You know, everybody misses Anthony, and I think with restoring the car, it was almost bringing a little piece of him back. You know, we can never have our best friend back, but we can at least have his car all bitching and restored. You know, his art just back. We're just like we all had the same intentions. Yeah, it'd be great to have a club someday. It'd be great to you know start a car club, this and that. No, I think that's that's why that's why we're still together and we're still we're still all pretty much all the regional members. I think that's the way it'll stay for a long time. I love those guys. Does the world need the shifters? I join the many that stand behind the rousing rally of yes. <laughs> the world needs shifters and the word is yes. Did, did the world need the shifters? Did the world need this revival of the 50s? It did. The, the fact of the matter, it truly did because it, it's storytelling. It, it all comes down to that. We're telling a story of a generation past. The shifters need to live on. Car clubs need to live on. Greasers and hooligans need to live on because that is the American attitude that created America in the first place. When you ask me if anybody cares if the shifters are coming back, you know, shifters 2.0, whatever they're going to call it, but, you know, I don't think the shifters cared when they first started if the world cared. They were doing what they wanted to do, and that's what they're doing today. It's not up to the world. It's up to the shifters. I don't think the shifters care what the world needs. And that's what's so cool about them. Listen, if they were like everybody else and tried to play to the world, they wouldn't be who they are. They, they wouldn't have made that mark or defined themselves. So I don't think they care much about what the world thinks. Do I think that the world needs the shifters? Well, I would say that the shifters were a club that influenced a lot of people. And now it's really up to the young kids to sort of take this to the next level. Because it's inspiring to young people to be able to go and see their the old style builder guys and be able to talk to them. Hot rods are badass and it's never, you know, don't ever don't ever give up on it if you're if you want to do it and reach out to us, man. We'd love, I'd love to get some young blood into this. It's truly there because they want to do it because they love it, not because they want to be cool at school or something. Um, if the kids out there, if you think that it's not possible, it's definitely out there. And I know that I can speak for myself and many of my friends that are around me. 
I've got a lot of spare parts laying around this garage. And if there's a kid that's truly interested in doing it, you can have them. That's it. Things couldn't be any better for the shifters. We're, we're, we're gonna do some shows. We're building the hot rods right now. Um, and we're, we're, we're not done yet. And um, it, it's a cool thing. And all while having Anthony over our shoulders. I feel it. When we picked up his car yesterday, we got in the car and I said to the guys, he's here. I can't feel it, I can't see it, I can't smell it, but he's here, I just know it. And the sketch of Mark, he said, yeah, he is. We can feel it too. It was just in the air, man. I don't know how to explain it. One last time, cheers to Anthony. Cheers to Anthony. Yep. Yep. Whiskey to the camera guy. It's all good. <laughs> hey, we're trying to have a good time. When the shifters started building the hot rods that would change the world for generations, they put all those cars on coker tires. Now, 30 years ago, running a bias ply white wall on a rowdy hot rod like this one wasn't just a tire choice, but a real statement about the heart and soul of its owner. And the same holds true today. The right tire on your car is as much about you as it is about the car. The shifters made the park tilt on Coker tires, and it's almost poetic that Coker got behind this documentary project. So make sure you subscribe, catch every episode of this limited series from the Motor Underground, and then go change the world on your new Cokers. I mean, who knows, maybe someday we'll be telling your story.